Listen to me. We don't want to kill any of you. But trust me, we will. Wake him up a little! This whole thing is pretty much done. We're more ghosts than people. You have got to keep faith. They will not crush us. Dutch. My best friend. You know how we met? A pair of hucksters trying to rob each other. Back in 78 or thereabouts. You have to love yourself a fire. It's one of the blessings. Sure, we can have fire. And we can have the knowledge of fire. But with that comes the knowledge of Gentlemen, Ooh. this is a robbery. Sons of Dutch. Makes us brothers. Sometimes, brothers make mistakes. You will never change. I know that. All of you venerate savagery. And you will die savagely. Stay strong. Stay with me. You have to love yourself a fire. Okay. All right. Welcome to Chapter Six of Heroes and Hardships Handy with a Steel. This is day two, and I will show you the newspaper from this morning. Death in the Square. A hail of bullets were heard in the main square of town when Sheriff Gunderson lawfully went to disarm Grover Peterson. Grover, a notorious fellow, resisted, and his cousins, the David, took up steel to defend their kin. Luckily, the sheriff had backup, as Deputy Ward and a bystander, Lou Longley, also joined the fray. Unsubstantiated reports claim an engine was involved, but we were unable to get confirmation on that detail. It is a reporter's opinion that no engine would stand up to a white man, pious or evil. When all was said and done, the sheriff and his soldiers vanquished these thugs, killing Grover Peterson, Bishop David, and Henry David. Abel David turned yellow and ran off. Next article. Union shut down. Protesters at the Dunn Mine were looking to unionize, but word is that Mrs. Dunn visited the mine herself and talked her workers out of their rash decision. Bonuses were granted and all went their happy ways with only a half day of work. And then there's a picture of Mrs. Dunn. This morning sees the sheriff and Bill making their way towards the Preston mine to visit Mr. Sweet. Mr. Sweet is a lawyer by trade for Preston and Preston. He had told Bill Tucker the previous day at the Jewel that he might have a location of the Davids because the Davids had each uh, applied for work there. And uh, until yesterday, one was employed with Preston and Preston, at least briefly. Uh, a sec. You are greeted by Mr. Sweet's secretary, and um, well, uh, before that, let's. Uh, what are you guys doing as you're kind of riding up to? the Preston mine. Well, Bill Bill would be atop his Palomino horse as uh, the sun rose in the east and uh, Sheriff and Tucker got an early start of it. And he'd be kind of explaining the situation to Gunnarsson as they clop along. 
Now, yeah, we're going to go up and we'll talk to this Mr. Sweet. I'll let you do most of the talking. I don't know if I have much liking for him. Seems like kind of a soft man. No callus on his hands and uh, seems to take a liking to old Clementine there down at the Jewel. I don't know. Never much trusted a man without calluses on his hands, if you know what I mean, Sheriff. <laughs> well, I reckon you got some common sense there, Bill, but if you remember your Bible verses, uh, what was it that was said? The meek shall inherit the earth? Yeah, meek shall inherit the earth, but they don't win a gunfight, Sheriff. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Uh, he's a lettered man. He's slick in his own way, and I suppose he's got a good head on his shoulders. As long as he can point us in the right direction towards the old Davis boys, ah, I suppose, well, I'll keep my mouth shut. How about that? Oh, no, Bill. I trust your instincts. You're a good man, and you got a good eye for this sort of thing, but I'll be wary of him. I find that Lawyers are as good as obstructing the lawful force of justice as they are of enabling it. Always a man of wisdom, Gundy. Lead on, brave leader. <laughs> yeah, you... You do ride your horses towards the Preston Mine... It's uh, the main mine of the Preston's Holdings. They have several mines in this area. They are the largest mining operation in Leclerc by far. And uh, as you get there, you seem to be um, clearly expected. Um, you see the employment office slash the uh, lawyer's office, and uh, you are directed in that way. Uh, the secretary ushers you in to Mr. Sweet's office. In the office, you see Mr. Sweet behind a desk and a man uh, standing there in front of him um, looking over some papers. Um, both you, Bill, and Gundy, you recognize this man as a recent uh, comer to town. Uh, I've talked to him sparingly, but you know that he was a former lawman. Um, Mr. Sweet looks up to Mr. Sexton and shakes his head. I'm sorry, sir. We just don't have any openings just this minute. Uh, oh, excuse me, he says, and stands up and walks around the, his desk. Sheriff, deputy, come in, come in. Arthur would notice him walking in. <clears throat> Not his head, Sheriff. How's it going? Sheriff, I looked a sweet smile, but then look at the the man who called out, called his uh, title, looks him over, and squints for a moment. Oh, hello there, uh, Arthur. Right? Yeah, that'd be right. Well, wouldn't expect me to see you over here. And... Sorry, Mr. Sweet. I apologize. I know this gentleman. Um, what are you up here for, sir? I'm well, just looking for some honest work. Oh, is that right? Well, uh, I got a bit of business here, Mr. Sweet, but um, if you wouldn't mind sticking about, I wouldn't mind chatting you up on that score. I don't mind at all. You know, kind of, I'll leave you to your peace. I'll go out to the to the front here and wait for you. Oh, I don't think that's necessary. I think if my instincts are right, Sheriff Gunderson, uh, what he's going to offer you has, well, very much to do with our conversation, if that's okay with you, Sheriff. I very much want to see these David boys apprehended. Well, I wasn't going to... And push Arthur into it, but I suppose it wouldn't hurt none. Mr. Sweets, the senses are correct, and Mr. Six, and I was going to offer you a position uh, as a lawman, uh, temporary for now, potentially become more permanency if you were interested in such an occasion. 
Yeah, well, temporary will probably be up my alley right now. Not looking to get back into the lawman. Money ain't there for it. I'm tired of tightening my belt. I'll just hope a more permanent position doesn't open up there, Mr. Sexton. Now, you can talk to Mr. Sweet. Uh, are you familiar with the Davis boys, Arthur? Go ahead and give me a streetwise. David boys, right? Not yeah, David. Davis. Mm -hmm. Made the mistake of giving them a first name, last name. <laughs> Is there a Davis David? Please say no. <laughs> There's not. Okay, what a shame. Yeah, Arthur, you've heard that uh, they've... Well, you heard the hubbub about the previous day for sure then that's that uh, sheriff gunderson and a couple others gunned down uh, a tree of them in the street after a brief encounter um other than that you've played cards with them etc they're they're a bunch of most of them are uh pretty drunken fools really so you mean that's will the david boys huh ran to a few times heard about the other day oh, well that was a load of something I wish I wouldn't have stepped into but forced our hand but yeah that's what we'd be dealing with Arthur I understand if you're not keen on it I heard rumor tell you used to be a decent lawman out wherever you come from but I don't mean to to push you if you ain't interested in such a deal. Well, and you look over at Jonathan and look back at see, you know, uh, there's no spots right now open. I wouldn't mind some temporary money. Well, we'll call it settled. I'll draft up something more official, but we'll call it a handshake right now and reach his hand out. All right, they would give it a grasp and firm shake. And I yep. am witness, so... He shrugs. And Mr. Sexton, let me tell you, I have a personal stake in this. I, These David boys have injured somebody very, very important to me. And, well, if you help the sheriff here and the deputy, I think that I might be able to, well, let another miner go. Ah, uh, well, that would be much appreciated. I'll do what I can to help you out, Sheriff. Hope my gun hand's still as good as it used to be. Well, I'm sure there's no issue with that score. There's plenty of unfortunate mishaps going about. Now that's business concluded, I suppose we should move on to the matter at hand. You had some information on these, uh, these David boys, uh, Mr. Sweet? I do. Unfortunately, not as concise as I was hoping, but each of them have applied here for jobs, and we did give Bill David a job uh, just days back. But uh, unfortunately, they, uh, between the eight of them, including the cousins, they've put their residences in two places, and he pushes two of the um, two bills out their um their contracts essentially um you only see as on their side as marks of x's but he says uh this one is bill david and this one is abel david yeah. bill david has his residence as uh the brookville cabins and i don't know if you're familiar with where those are sheriff but they're down yonder uh, south of here about a day's ride um abel david here he says he uh, lives at the mining camp up in the mountains or i'm sorry the uh the lumber camp up in the mountains they have some temporary work up there too and between all of them well there's a few more at the brookville cabins and then there's a just a couple less up there at the the lumberjack camp so i, I i'm not real sure uh, can i make a, a check because i remember uh, from the scene in the bar that, that somebody mentioned the red-headed one was the one that was a little bit more reasonable yes uh, what his name was his name is gary you would remember name that is okay his name is gary 
Yeah, so Bill kind of picks up uh, one of the bills, picks up the other one, and hands it to Sheriff and looks it over. You said Gary? That was his name? Gary. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, I don't know about Bill and Abel, uh, Gundy. Uh, here, Arthur, you can take a look at these if you want. He hands it over, and there's a slight crumple paper. Now, that ginger, uh, I think his name's Gary. If you're going to do any sort of reasoning with these folks, as much as you can reason with a cretin like this, uh, try to figure out where he's at. You know, maybe the rest of these boys will listen to him. You know, I'd like to keep my head on my shoulders if I can, and if we could solve this without another gun battle in the street, I'd say it's a win-win. Mr. Sweet says, uh, he's handed over all the contracts. I, I don't recall exactly, um, and Sheriff, you look down and you're holding Gary, and it does say the Brookville cabins for his place of uh, residence. Mm-hmm. He scratches his chin. Well, I'm definitely amenable to that course of action, Bill. I much prefer to I don't think all these David boys are all hell of high water. People get drunk all the time and do foolish things. As long as they do a partial time, I've got no issue with it, but you well know, Abel drew steel on us and you well know, Bill's been already reported to have engaged in assault. I mean those are the really the only two I'm looking to take in, but I imagine the rest ain't going to be too amenable for the Ken. We, we can try to speak with Gary, but I don't know the kind of influence he wields. My understanding was, was Abel was uh, one of the, well, I hate to say patriarch, but he was one of the more reasonable of the brothers, what I can recall. Bill, uh, well, that speaks for itself. He's a big man, that Bill. That's what I remember. Would have been a good miner. But, uh, harming one of our citizens, that just can't do it all. Uh, I agree with you, Mr. Sweet. As the good book says, an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Gundy, Arthur, these two boys here that broke the law, uh, our justice should be as swift and as wrathful as the Lord's, but... Listen, if we can reason with their brothers and cousins to say, listen, if you break the law here in our town, this is going to be the price. If they don't see it our way, well, we got steel to back up our words. Yeah, we'll give it a go. See if we can bring in Bill. As far as going up uh, north, we ain't going to be able to get all done in one day. I'm going to go ahead and yeah, as much as the fool boy gives me a headache, I'll see if I can. Maybe we can talk with uh, that fool Nelly. He can get a little posse and go up north. I think Abel will be less trouble to deal with, to be honest. We'll go out and try to get out there today. Well, we'll make the trip south and try to deal with Bill as presently as we can. Mr. Sweet says, Well, uh, you don't need to bother yourself. I can talk to the deputy. If you want to write a letter or just go by my word of mouth, I can let him know. It'd be awfully kind of you, Mr. Sweet. You're familiar with Nelson? I've met him once or twice, yes. He's a good boy. A uh, bit foolhardy, but he's got a good head on his shoulders otherwise. Uh, he'll know who to call upon. Just tell him to get the posse we had from that day and you know, give him a shot, see what he can come up with. I will. I'll let him know. He stands up and puts his hat on and tips it. Is there anything else you need from me, gentlemen? Mm, No. I reckon that's uh, all we'll need unless... uh, You got any questions, Bill or Arthur? Uh, No questions presently, Gundy. Uh, Thank you for your time, Mr. Sweet. I know it's uh, uh, quite an inconvenience to have... Ah, yeah, I'm, I don't have any questions as well. I imagine I'll be seeing you when this is done and over with. I do hope so, Mr. Sexton. I would be very happy to offer you employment here at Preston and Preston for one of our highest wages for non-skilled employees. Yeah, smart. 
Yeah. That's better than starving to death sometimes. It'll work. Yeah, of course. Nothing like swinging a hammer. <laughs> That's what I hear. Well, gentlemen, I think I'll lock up and make my way into town. Well, thank you again, Mr. Sweet. You travel safely now. He nods and kind of waits for you all to leave before he does. Yeah, I mean, Gundy will put his hat back on. Come on, boys. we got got at least a day ahead of us now. I think we got one more stop as well. You um, head back out onto the road. Uh, you see Mr. Sweet kind of veer off and uh, looks like he's not going directly to town, whatever he's doing. Uh, before he goes, he locks the door of his office and walks uh, away over towards the stables. Tucker uh, kind of falls in besides Arthur and says, yeah, I've seen you around town, Arthur. It's good to be out on a job. So tell me about yourself. <laughs> Not much to tell. Grew yeah. born and raised in New York. Moved out west. Became a lawman after the Civil War. Town dried up. Payment dried up. I moved on. New York. <laughs> New York City. Can't say I've ever been there. Yeah, it ain't much. Lots of uh, lots of gangs and crime and dirt. If you ask me, is this is much more uh, peaceful? Yeah, yeah, you got that right. We do have a little piece of paradise out here, I'd say. Well, <laughs> except until well, up to yesterday, till the sheriff here had to put a couple holes in Bishop and Henry. Hey, well, Bill, I already told you. They should just fire me and give the damn badge to Lou. Lou. Now you can find him in a pub half the time and the other half the time in the gutter. <laughs> All right. <laughs> kind of slaps at a bug on his neck and kind of tilts his hat. There's a little bit of sweat on uh, Tucker's brow and he takes out a red handkerchief and ties it around his neck. Yeah, you gotta deal. Saddle up and just clarify, Ted, is the visit to um what's her name? Mrs. Dunn gonna be yeah, hey, this uh, session thing or next? No, next. Next? Okay. Well, you should go ahead and make out for them David boys down south. On our way back, might stop by and see Mrs. Dunn on her account, but this is more present business. Um, in the distance, you hear a clap of thunder. And the sky is overcast. It's not that unusual for May, but uh, before long, you see just light snow beginning to fall. Well, shit. That's an inconvenience. Tucker takes that handkerchief quickly off his neck and kind of wipes some of the snow off of his brow that's fallen there and says, Well, yeah, that's made in Colorado for you. One minute you're in the blazing sun, next minute <laughs> your horse is going through a well, I can't call this a snowstorm, but let's hope it doesn't get any worse. Yeah, we'll keep an eye on it. I wager we can make some pretty good distance today if it gets a little bad, but it starts getting too bad. We'll try to set up, get a fire going. 
Last thing you want to do after surviving a gunfight is <laughs> die of pneumonia. Ain't that the truth? You head on down the road. Um, the snow is picking up as you go, and the wind is beginning to blow. I'd like each of you to give me a survival roll. That is under, I believe, what? It is under intelligence, yes. Nice. So, Bill and Gundy have dressed rather appropriately, but Arthur is not wearing his heavy duster um, and is feeling a bit cold pretty soon as you're uh, only a few hours down the road heading south towards this the Brookville um, well actually go ahead and give me a lore check as well Let's see what you guys know about this place lore knowledge as well mm -hmm. knowledge So, Sheriff and Bill, you know that there's a... Actually, I'll just give it... I'm going to whisper to you, Gundy, since you get the most. As they're going along, Gunderson thinks about pipes up. So, I'm sure you're somewhat familiar, Bill, but this for you as well, Arthur. Where we're headed down south here, uh, it's kind of a small lake, a few cabins. Now, it's got some decent real estate, but last I heard, mostly abandoned heavily wooded out area so I had to be careful especially if this snow picks up might make it pretty awful down there also wouldn't account of the beasts live out about but might be all right we just got to be careful in case them David boys is expecting us it's definitely a situation that favors a fortified position if you catch my meaning Uh, that I do. And he'll kind of bundle his uh, clothes up, get a little warmer. Cheerful. Look at Arthur. You doing all right back there? Yeah, a little chilly. Mm -hmm. Tucker look back and do I have like a, a blanket or a poncho I can throw back to him? Sure. And he kind of looks back and just kind of smirks. And as he as he kind of takes this poncho from his saddlebag and like tosses it back to Arthur, he says, "Don't worry, Gundy. If we get snowed in, you know, we can always eat Arthur." <laughs> yeah. I don't know. He seems like a nice fellow, but I imagine if we're trying to consume him, he's a stubborn cuss. Yeah, I, I doubt it. Ah, I'm guessing he's a bit chewy. Oh yeah, a little, little bit tough there. Oh, joking aside, Arthur, go ahead and put that on. I'll keep the snow off your shoulders. Keep the chill at bay at least for a little while. I suspect our blood's going to be hot before we know it. And uh, he just kind of uh, searches the horizon as they kind of continue along the road. Yeah, I wasn't expecting this type of weather in May, but... Well, that's Colorado for you. 
Like Bill said, one moment it's sun beating down on your head like anywhere else out in the west. Next moment, you got a little kiss of winter. Now let's just hope that it just continues to be a kiss and nothing that would happen down at the jewel if you get my drift. <laughs> Your horses seem to do fairly well in the snow. It's um, it's more than a dusting, but uh, you seem to navigate it okay as you go probably four hours. And it's getting to be uh, just after um, just after uh, noon, uh, around that time, about one. You're all starting to get kind of hungry. Um, based on your survival rolls earlier, I would assume that the sheriff and the deputy do have some rations on them, but Arthur does not. So what are you going to do about that? Oh, the blessed virgin, Arthur. Forgot to bring some vittles, too? <laughs> That's on you, sheriff. I already gave him the coat off my back. Yep, yeah, I got no problem with that. Hey. Searches around, see if he has some jerky. Yeah, I got some jerky in here somewhere. Yeah, I'm much obliged. I wasn't expecting to do any traveling. Oh, no, that's fair enough. Probably should give you a chance to go collect a few things before we start riding out. There you are. The sheriff will split some of his jerky with Arthur. Yeah, I'm much obliged again. I don't blame you. Come looking for a job with Mr. Sweet. You don't expect to be doing this type of work. Something more involving maybe cushions and uh, the indoors and maybe a nice cup of tea with two cubes of sugar. And kind of continues to prattle on, describing every nicety that uh, Mr. Sweet may enjoy in his soft life. Yeah, you both get the sense that Bill might not like Mr. Sweet much. <laughs> <laughs> and Gun Gunderson just kind of chuckles. Hell, <laughs> Bill. I can't imagine what that gentleman must have done to upset you so. I just didn't like the way I looked at him. Have the look of a viper in his eyes, you know? Mean as a rattlesnake, I think, if you get down to it. A lot of them, a lot of them lettered boys get them cornered they'll be nasty as a honey badger <laughs> what the hell's that i never heard of a honey badger you All right, sure mister... you're not a lettered man yourself mr tucker i ain't never heard of such an animal i have my moments sheriff i have my moments <laughs> well honey badgers and boppers aside I don't know. I suppose Mr. Sweet might say the same about us if we're about to get down into some rough business. I'm sure that Grover didn't take too kindly to how we look whenever we drew steel on him. I imagine I wasn't smiling. But I see your point. Well, most of those other men about business anyways. So that's why they always have the look. Yeah. I'm always a bit leery when it comes to those official types of dispensing justice. I was always of the opinion that people who have served in law enforcement in official capacity, sheriffs, deputies, similar lawmen, peace officers, or in the military should be the ones meriting out justice. They kind of understand the Nooks and crannies of what the position entails, but lots of lettered men end up being judges, lawyers, etc. They do well enough, I suppose, but I don't know. I got concerns sometimes, especially the business lawyers. Spits on the ground. I think you might be onto something there, Sheriff. Man don't know his metal until he faced up another man in the street, both drawn steel. Hell, if I had to guess, Mr. Sweet. <laughs> He'd end up with a puddle at his left leg. 
Well, Mr. Sweet Seg, I hope you don't offend someone of that nature to have him draw steel in the street. I don't even know if Mr. Steel carries Mr. Sweet carries steel on him. Well, you don't need to carry steel when you can afford to buy somebody to go ahead and carry. Ah, oh, you're gonna go work for him after all this, aren't you, Sext? Well, steady money. Now, Gunderson's gonna offer you a job on a permanent basis. He says he's retiring, right, Gundy? <laughs> <laughs> well. I considered it, but if I end up being elected sheriff, I suppose I'd stay in term. That said, Arthur, I mean, I was honest about what I said. I would offer you a position. I can never have enough deputies, and I imagine I wager we got enough on on company budget <laughs> to afford another man of your caliber, keep you fed, and not have you kill yourself in a mine. But I would never keep a man from doing what he first do. Well, if you're not into interested in a permanent position, I'm not going to force you. I'll tell you what, though. If mining ain't your trade, after you have a bit of fun with it, <laughs> I will put in a good word around town. If anybody's looking for work, I'll say that there's an honest gentleman happens to be about that may have skill with steel and is willing to learn a new trade. That's what I call Steel, skilled labor, Sexton, he has a big mouth of beans and a mouth full of beans and kind of like reaches down to the can with a spoon again. Skilled labor. Yeah, we'll just see. Only thing I'm looking for right now is just to make a means to the end, you know? Something that couldn't do back, back east in the small town there. You can only get paid what the people can afford. <laughs> With this uh, a horrible crime wave that's street sweeping the streets of Leclerc. <laughs> now you'll be employed in no time, Sexton. <laughs> Especially after <clears throat> uh, Gunderson runs for mayor. <clears throat> oh, hell, that ain't happening. Why not? Oh, because the mayor's the mayor, Bill. You know that. I'm lucky to be the sheriff by his grace. Like I said, there's going to be an election for that. I may not even get to keep this damn position. Well, that's the way it is, that's the way it is. Now, oh, you're going to keep that position, Gunderson, if you want or not. Like the Lord says, you got to do penance. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I hope it's not that serious. I got some things to answer for. All right, don't we all, don't we all? Yeah. Here, Arthur, you can have the rest of these beans if you want them. Yeah, no shame in letting them go to race now, is there? Yeah, just don't share a sleeping bag with Gundy there after you eat those. I keep us mighty warm. Oh, hell. The threats of flatulence aside, um, the three lawmen continue along the road after stopping a brief while to eat. The snow is probably four inches now and you do see the outline of where um, the trail heads into the woods um, towards the lake. Can't see it from here but um, I'm assuming at least Bill and the sheriff have been down here a couple times hunting and stuff. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. Bill kind of, uh, at this point, he has uh, cold weather gear on and his hat's kind of pulled down low and kind of runs up a little, little bit ahead looking at the tracks in the snow and kind of points him out. Is it windy? Is he kind of have to raise his voice? Yeah, it's, it's windy and uh, snowing. It's, or it is snowing. Mm, I got up there. Hey, Arthur! Sheriff! Over here. I got some tracks. Well, I reckon we're about there. Make sure that your steel's not sticking to the holster. 
You got a clean draw just in case. Hopefully we won't have to use these damn things, but we're getting close. Oh, I'm just sure these are reasonable people. Damn near were yesterday. That goddamn Grover. He just had to shoot off at the mouth and try to put himself above the law. Hopefully we got some voices of reason in this place. We'll just have to see about that now, won't we? As you're heading around, the, you begin, you see the lake finally. It doesn't take long. It's not too far into the woods. Um, the trail is badly overgrown, so you're going to need to decide if you're going to dismount and lead your horses or try to make them, th make them go through there. Uh, dismount and lead would be the safest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Tucker kind of uh, checks his weapon, spins the barrel around, puts it back in his holster, and hops down from his horse. boy. I know, I know you're cold. I'm cold, too. Arthur's colder than both of us. <laughs> yeah, it, the nice thing is the canopy of trees is kind of keeping the snow off of you just a bit. Um... Gunderson would dismount take point well let's go over things one more spell just to make sure we're set I'm gonna try to lead and try to get him to come out peacefully I only intend to make one arrest if Abel's here I suppose it'll be a second uh, not that I'm aware of the other boys have done anything overly raunchy that other people in town wouldn't be rightfully accused of but if talking fails and steel's drawn, spread out, don't bunch up. I'd prefer if we could take them alive, but it's a gunfight, boys. I'd rather them be dead than us, as much as it pains me to say it that way. Uh, there ain't no shame in saying it that way, Sheriff. doesn't take too long after you following the coastline of the lake if, if you will and you see a small cabin uh, no lights on it's starting to get dark out all right let's hitch up the horses back here so that wayward gunfire doesn't nick them Take cover in them trees. I want us to get a, a decent surround about here so that if one of them tries to run, they got to go through us to get out. I know there's only three of us, so you all know your shapes. <laughs> I know my shapes. Tucker kind of half crouches and kind of uh, moves forward through the darkness. What, what does the cabin look like? Are the lights on inside? Are they yeah, there's no there's no lights on inside. No lights it's on just, inside. it's probably dusk. Mm -hmm. Smoke rising from the chimney or anything? No. Yeah. No signs of well, life that you can tell. Yeah. So, here's what I want to do. I'll go here and you go to this and just kind of put we're at a cabinet. If, if, if there's snow on the ground, am I able to use my hand to kind of draw on it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so Gunderson will kind of draw on it. This here's the cabin. You draw like a square. I want us to try to set up like yonder. He's going to just basically put a triangle around it. I'll go here. The other two spread out here and here. That way we got clear lines of vision between the three of us. And if any of them try to go out the back window or something of that nature, cellar door, what have you. We can call it out. Try to keep them all within that uh, triangle, I believe it's called. <laughs> I do believe it is called that, Gundy. I am a lettered man, and I know my shapes as well. Oh, come on, boy. He kind of uh, hitches his horse to a tree and 
moves off into the position as indicated by Gunderson. Yeah, hopefully this moves goes as smooth as possible, Cheryl. I hope so too. But if the shoot starts, uh, you boys just go for it. Defend yourselves. Uh, that I imagine we can do. And Arthur will start heading off. And I will say to the Lord, you are my place of safety and protection. And Tucker quotes Psalm 91 and slinks off into the darkness to the apex of the triangle. So you're surrounding the cabin in a triangle? Yeah. yeah. As you're doing this, you are looking around and you, you can't see anything in the windows. It's just too dark. Gunderson would wait for the other two to be in position and then taking cover behind the tree a bit. Bill David! This is Sheriff Gunderson. I'd like to have a word. I know you make residence here. I don't wish for conflict. Make yourself known if you're about. Um, will each of you give me a perception roll? Perception. Senses. Yep. Yeah. One sec. So, let me, uh, hold on one sec. Bill, um, you hear a noise. Um, actually, every, everyone does. Um, Bill, you hear something actually from behind you. Um, and Gundy, you hear something to your right um, and left, actually. And... Arthur, you hear something to the south of you. I'm going to swing you over to a map here in a second. Just give me a sec. So you kind of get a spatial awareness of what's happening. I'm guessing this is kind of the way you want to be positioned. Try yeah, and... yeah, pretty much. Okay, I'll try to be like against the tree. Yeah, or go something. ahead. And, go ahead and put yourself where you think you'd be. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of worry. I guess I can't see uh, Bill, but I can see the sheriff. Mm -hmm. Bill hears something behind him. He kind of reflexively spin around his six shooter, drawled from his hip. Yeah, Arthur would do the same. So what you see, um, Arthur, you see very surprised but you see a headdress full of feathers walking through the trees and let me he seems to be moving towards the sheriff he has a bow in his hand um, you catch him through the trees to see this sheriff you look to your right and you see 
very something very similar and Bill behind you you see um, the same Where did the other one go gets all of them there's one more one six sorry Up at the, there's another cabin up there, and you kind of see him moving. What do you guys do? Um, uh, are we noticed? I mean, I, I take it the sheriff's noticed. Oh, they they look well. They look like they're walking towards you, trying to creep up on you, but you spotted them. Each of them. They got weapons out. Oh yeah. yeah they got weapons out. They're engines with weapons out. Oh, they got. You see. You see one of them with a rifle, and the rest of them with uh, bows. Which one has a rifle? Uh, the one directly south of you. The leader. Mm -hmm. You knew it was going to be him with the gun. <laughs> um. Oh shit. This is not what we want. Um. Yeah, sheriff. <laughs> My Gunderson's eyes are gonna go wide. And he just in case the other two don't notice. Braves in the trees, and he's gonna start making wave to the the house and get his six shooter out and just book it probably because <laughs> we need to. We're we're not in a good place. No. All right, let's roll initiative then. Let me make sure the oh, track shit. is cleared. <laughs> Ready? Yeah, go ahead. That should be in your combat initiative. Combat. There we go. I'll let you guys just all roll them first. Okay. I'll roll mine. Redskins! <laughs> <laughs> well, they... You're not the one surrounded, ghost. Uh, uh, excuse at me? At least they didn't ambush you. I got I got Braves to my right and Braves to my left. I'm in uh, I'm in just as much deep shit no, as you I are. Can't, I probably can't see. I probably can't <laughs> see. That. You don't Stuck understand. It's not good for middle. anyone. Stuck in the middle. Uh, oh, the leader. Holy shit, he's fast. Uh-oh. You might be in the most trouble now, Bill Tucker. <laughs> Alright. Oh, great. What I get? Good one. luck. Yeah. Right, I'll just be the anchor. The brave leader. Um, say he's back a little bit. Um, he was creeping Mr. up. Sweet, let the all yours. <laughs> this this engine, he's creeping up, and when Bill clearly sees him. They lock eyes, and he uh, has already got his rifle out, obviously, and he tries to shoot Bill Tucker. I'm in cover. You are in cover. I'll give you a, give him a minus five, probably. Let's see. Nine hexes. So that's 18. So nine. Um... That's going to be medium range. He actually is going to aim. So he puts the butt of the rifle and stares down the barrel towards Bill. Um, as this happens, um, not sure what's happening, but... Bill, you hear some movement from above you, behind you, as another brave comes around the corner there. You're up, Bill. All right. Uh, let's see. You can run, which um, you can move up to 10, uh, 10 hexes. I can get to the door jam, can I? Could. And I can't fire then, though. No, you cannot. If you run, you're basically um, you. So running does two things. Um, 
you can move double, um, right? But, but you get a negative five to be hit, and then on your if you do it, if your next action is an a, some sort of an attack action, you take a negative five to your roll. So you're negative five to be hit and negative five to hit people. Yeah, I should probably run. <laughs> um, I, yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna book it into cover. Okay. Uh, can I make it to here? Well, you can move. It's ten, but it's around it's around the door jam though. So it'd probably be more like right here, huh? Uh, I can't see where you're pointing, but like right there. Yeah. Was that ten? It said nine, but you would have to kind of go that's around fine. this door jam, I guess. So yeah, yeah. All right, so that's that cost you five AP, and you are at uh, you're running. This is what I've been using for running. That did not work. Um, there we go. I don't know what that other five. Yeah. So Tucker, Tucker, uh, he hears the sheriff, and he's like, "I hear you, sheriff. They're thick out here, thick like mosquitoes." And you just see him kind of burst from the trees as, like, the braves kind of emerge from the forest behind him. And uh, he runs up the steps into the cabin. You kind of hear the uh, the planks kind of creak, and he slams his back against the wall and uh, uh, steadies his breathing and gets ready to fire if he gets a chance. Yep. Uh, the next brave moves up. Sheriff, you're up. Um, so do I know if there's a door here, or is it just this window? Where you can see in. That's a door. Um, it's like a, just a kind of like a it's flapping open in the wind. There's no door on your side, Arthur. Ah, oh, hell. So this is a door? Uh, right right in front of you. That's right in front of you? Oh, where you can oh. see in, yep. Oh, Oh, there's a window. Good. That changed. I was, I was going to dive through. Um, yeah, Gunderson seeing that um, shit's gone to hell real quick is going to just run into the building and, and get cover. Um, two, three, four. So how, how far can it? Can you, you can run you again? can run up to ten hexes. Okay. Um, so I just want to see what it looks like on the inside here. Is this is this like is this a cot? Is that a table? That's like a bed, I think. Okay. You could always flip it over so. or something if you wanted. Probably not this turn. Yeah, not uh, this turn. Yeah, so Gunderson would um, corner himself a bit and okay. just run. Uh, how many did you you move? The total of seven. Seven. Right? Yep. So that is going to be four AP spent. Okay. Uh, let's see who is next. Brave number three. Brave number three is heading towards Arthur. Running. Woo, woo, woo! <laughs> That's my... Oh, shit. He, um... He has a tomahawk out. Just rushing him. Shoot his ass, Arthur. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Um, that's that one. And then the next one. He also has a tomahawk rushing towards and he's up up on you very quickly but he is point blank range all right arthur you're up all right uh seeing that brave coming at me i'm gonna go ahead and see that he's in the open take a shot at him because i ain't gonna go far with him on my tail yeah, you both have a bunch of cover in between you because you're in the woods, and so it's going to be a negative five to hit. You are in, I believe that is medium range. So go ahead and use your pistol if you click on your combat menu. You can also aim and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Um. What's his AP at? Five? His is at five. So if you aim, you, you can aim twice and then shoot and have... He won't be able to interrupt you. Yeah, that's what I'll do. Okay. So you can aim once. So we'll do that. 
Um, so I'll put a blue on you. That's aiming once. I should have done that for this guy too. I don't think he really has a shot anymore though. Um, so now it's the brave leader's turn who his aim is for not because Bill got away. Um, he's going to run too. All right, he's done. I don't know if anybody see that. Uh, so who is the next? Uh, so Arthur, you're up again. I'm gonna go ahead and aim again. Okay. I believe you are still up. Yep, you're still up. All right. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and let the shot off then. Okay, so give yourself two benefits, and then when it asks you for additional mods, uh, it's gonna be a negative 10. Because he's running, and all the cover in between. The Lord is with you, Arthur. Remember, two benefits. There's only one guy, and you better pray to him. Send these heathens to the maker. <laughs> well... Yep. That ain't good. That is a bad roll. Yeah, the it just ricochets off a tree. As he's trying to close on you. Alright, the next uh who has the lowest? I believe it's Gundy. Yeah, so as Gunderson uh, gets in there, he's breathing heavy already. <laughs> and he uh he yells out Bill, can you hear me? I hear you! Here, oh, here they come! <laughs> He's, and, um, the sheriff is just thinking he saw the one with, he saw, the, I saw the one with the rifle, so I would have seen him, like, built, I would have seen him run. As yeah, as, like, mm -hmm. he saw him. Exit. You see the one with the rifle? Uh, it's, this is a wall, right? here. No, you're on a porch. Oh, okay. What's this thing? It's just like a porch? That's the steps. Right. Oh crap! Okay. I mean, this guy. I see him. Yep. Yeah, yeah, I see him. I think he's the mucky muck, and if you take him out, they might cut tail. Turn to run. He's saying that as he's making sure everything's loaded. And uh, I'm just gonna take an aim, um, just towards the doorway. First, first one I see coming in. If it's if it's not Arthur somehow sprinting his way around the side, I'm gonna be prepared. So that would be technically an interrupt. Um, which uh, which doorway are you pointing at? Uh, this one. Can you ping it again? Okay, that's what I thought. Because yep. I hear I hear Bill up this way, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm gonna assume Mr. Tucker has my flank because he's my deputy. So I'm just gonna hold this door. Yeah. So interrupt uh, cost five, and then if any hmm. anything happens, if somebody comes through that door, you will automatically shoot them, or shoot at them at least. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's an interrupt action on you. I'm just gonna do. Ooh, shit! Actually. Yep. Go ahead. Can I shut that? Yeah, can sure, I shut sure. that door. Uh, okay. Yes, you uh, you can shut it. Yep. That would I'll be an interact for interrupt. two. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so it's shut. All right, so we'll know that's shut. Um, actually, give me a second, and I'll... Did that work? Can you not no longer see out that door? That is correct. Okay. So you shut it. All right, so fives. Um... Brave leader up here. Brave leader S6. Or, I'm sorry, not brave leader, but the uh, brave four. So he moved five. He has a he has a bow. He's just moving up closer. Bill, you're up. So this guy is right up on me, right? He's right up here. on you. But you ra so here's the here's the situation for both of you. You both are running. 
So you ran up these steps and basically are just turning around to fire. So mm -hmm. you're going to take a negative five to your shot, and he's going to take a negative five to be hit. But you're at point blank, which um, means there's no range penalty at all. So just that's what you're looking at. Uh, how many APs is an attack? Three. Yeah, better hope to kill him. He's at 10, he's at 6. Yeah, I'm just going to turn around, stick my gun in his face, and pull the trigger. Alright, so it'll ask you your range when it does, say point blank. Um, when it asks you for additional mods, do a negative 10. Benefit, none. None. Parshit, none. Additional, additional mods is what? Negative 10. Point blank. Mm -hmm. That's a hit. That is a hit. Um, so that's seven. That's fifteen. That and that negative three. So that's twelve. He's a minion. How does it kill him? So he turns around, like stumbling backwards up the steps. Reflexively sticks the gun in the guy's face, pulls the trigger, and it's just. The so blood explodes backwards and he falls down across the steps. And Bill, just RP wise, just kind of stumbles a little bit, then readies himself and searches for a next target. Yeah, he just crashes and on the stairs, laying dead. Um, nice shot. Okay. That's why you don't want to be shot at at point blank range. It's really bad. Um, I believe the next one is Brave One, and he is going to try. Um, what is that icon on him? I don't know. I don't think that's supposed to be there. Um, he's going to try to shoot you with the bow. Um, he's going to have a negative five for cover right there. Not an easy shot. I believe that's medium range for him. Yes, medium range. So he's going to try to shoot. Oh my god. Oh. No. In the head. Oh no. 13. I'm dead. 18. <laughs> no. Hold on. Let me look. Okay, so 13 16 21. You're actually not dead. Um that's not over immortality threshold either. It's just a wound. So let me give you a wound. It's not a mortal wound, so let me... It's a head wound. And so it was 21, right? So head via bow. 21. All right. So how does that, how does that look as you're sh shot in the face with an arrow, but wounded but not killed? It's happened in Hard Master, too. <laughs> <laughs> Oh <laughs> uh, man, there's not much. Maybe let's just say it. Uh, I'll say it goes into his eye. Oh well, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, we don't want to like give yourself any permanent because we don't know what. Yeah. Actually, if you want to do it right now, go ahead. Let's see. Usually we do let's this see. after, but if you want to know, um, go ahead and I want to know. So click on um, combat menu. Let's see just how bad it is. And then Combat menu. head wound. Uh, let me look and see what the severity is. Hold on. Uh, I don't have that memorized. Where's my severity? Menu? Severity. Okay, so your wound level is 12. It was a... Hold on. And it was a 20... What did I say? It's 21? Uh, 21. So it's a superficial, actually. Oh, that's not that bad. Yeah, it's not that bad. So I would not say the eye, because you're not going to take a wound effect from it. A no wound effect? Mm -hmm. 
Let's just say it like like uh, uh, so it, it pretty much like shreds his ear, you know, external yep. ear, mm -hmm. like very painful bleeding. Um, from the other side of the door, uh, uh, the sheriff can hear him. Ah, god damn it! And you're like uh, taking the Lord's name in vain is something, Bill. God damn it! I'm gonna one of you. You hear him. Cursing, Sheriff, what do you do? I believe you're up. Unless there's any further... Oh, no, you're not. Um, so the fives are up on the other side there. The Brave, who is now no longer... Uh, no, he would still be running. So he's going to be a negative five. But he's going to come through. He's going to charge. So um, he's coming through the woods, cutting this way and that way. Um, let me... Uh, the charge. Uh, so that's four AP. So you see this guy just barreling down on you. Um, he's no longer running. Uh, well, he he was. So that's four AP. All right, here he comes. He's gonna swing his tomahawk at you. You're gonna have to roll a dodge. Um, so, Tomahawk. Now, it's going to roll the, the ranged roll, but it's not. It, there is no ranged. It takes a hardship. Minus five. And then I'm just going to do that. Yeah, you're, you're rolling to beat a four. He can beat a four, son. Yeah! Yeah, he swings his Tomahawk, hits off a... Off a uh, tree limb, and you're up. Oh, Arthur's gonna, as he sees his life flash before his eyes before the tree intervenes, uh, he's, he's gonna ready his another shot. Mm -hmm. So you're point blank, or I'm sorry, you're adjacent. So he gets to dodge. All right. So when you do range, just do point blank or adjacent. Twenty versus. Yeah, you go out to shoot him, and he steps aside and hits your wrist with the half of the the axe. Woo! And that was. La -la -la -la. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think um, you're up, Gundy. Yeah, so Gunderson. Oh, actually, Brave yeah. Leader is up. Sorry. Shit. No. He runs up to the door. It's coming your way, Sheriff. Sheriff just hears it. <laughs> <laughs> now you're up, Sheriff. <laughs> um, so here, here in that, um, Sheriff was going to call out to Bill, but hearing Bill yell that, uh, instead, Gunderson's going to kind of take up position um, right next to the door and point his gun, uh, waiting for uh, the engine to come in, mm -hmm. and is just going to go for the interrupt okay. whenever he comes in the door. All right. that all right so who's the lowest out there uh, got some eights anything lower than an eight don't think so right you got an eight here got an 11 I got an eight all right. uh, so it's it is brave one I believe uh, nope spill Tucker you're up Brave one with that bow and arrow. I'm no longer running though. Right? You are not running. I don't know what that. Oh, I don't yeah. know how that. F what that five is from. So hmm. I didn't clear it. But you're no longer running. Um. Can I get into here? Can I get inside? Door shut. Screw it. I'm gonna shoot that fucker. Okay. 
Uh, oh, what does that wound do? Is it give me a hardship? Belly? It's automatically calculated, but it gives you a hardship. Okay. It'll drop okay. an extra die. So you're at medium range. Okay. Uh, if I aim, he'll get the shot on me, so I'll probably should just shoot him. Yep. All right, here we go. Pistol. Oh Lord, be with me now. Let me send these heathens to hell. So do I type in one hardship? No, nope, it's or already in there. Already? It should already be in there. No mods. No mods. Uh, medium range. Hit. And 22. Oh, nice, nice. The medium modifier was only two total. Oh, hit strike. Head strike. All right, this is going to be good. Uh, 6 plus 8. 14 plus 5. 19, he is dead. So his he runs towards me. <laughs> like, Bill Tucker has blood streaming out his left ear, and he kind of posts up on this post and kind of bees down his side and says, I'm going to send you to hell, you heathen. <laughs> Blows his head off. You do. Nice. All right. Um, I believe we are at eight. Still, is there another eight? Yep, you. It's me. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take another shot here. Hopefully, uh, I actually uh, hit him this time. All right. It's looking like a dance off over here. I'm sure. Good luck. Have fun. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna dodge, just put adjacent or whatever. Put your partner in the bushes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't run out of bullets over here is all I can say. Forty one. Let's see his yes. let's see his dodge. Arthur oh, man. Dodge this. Forty-one In versus his chest. A fifteen. Oh my! Is a twenty-six? Um, twenty-six plus eight. Oh, he's gonna be dead. How's that look? As you just point blank range. It's actually you're yeah, like actually grappling with each other. You know, it's like yeah, getting in close, and he's holding on. I'm holding on to his arm with my one hand, and he's holding on to my gun hand with his other. And as he, we're getting close and struggling, the See who gets the attack off. Arthur just squeezes the gun, and for a moment there, there's a little look of shock between the both of them as the Indian starts dropping down. Yep. Shoot him in the chest, and he just topples backwards, looks down, and bleeds out. And after he does that, Arthur's gonna wipe his brow real quick with his form. Um, the one with ten is going to um, try to shoot Bill Tucker with his bow. Which one is this spray for? Yep. Pretty sure that's medium. It's a hit for. Seven torso, so seven. That's enough to give you an injury. So it just nicks your side. As that brave shoots and the arrow skims you. Um. Alright, so I guess it's a uh, brave leader, huh? Oh shit, here we go. Uh, he opens the door with an interact, that's what he does. So let me, uh... Take his head off. <laughs> Alright, your interrupt would go off, if you wish it to be. Let's do it. Alright, so you pay the, the shot cost. And uh, he is point blank range, I believe. Uh, yeah, he's point blank. He 
it's not running any longer. So no negatives to your attack. Oh no. Pretty bad. Oh, Gandhi. I told you, Bill. Yeah, it just shoots the door instead of him. Um, okay. Uh, I believe there's a few of you with 11s. Bill, you're up. Yeah, he hears that gunshot go off uh, on the inside. And that door's locked, you said, right? Which door? No, I just said it was right shut. Here. Shut. Um, let's see here. He has 13. So I could shoot him then. I... No, he, he goes before me, though, doesn't he? Well, you go you go first. You're at 11. Yeah, that would take oh, you to 13. Yeah, it would. It would take you to 14. And then he would go, mm. and then he would go before yeah, me again. take you to 14. Mm. Uh, I'm going to try to bust through this door. Okay. So... Why don't you... Um, so you move... Um, I'll treat it as I'll treat like, it as a charge. You can knock it open. Yeah. And then you can step through. Cause you gotta move at least three for a charge. Okay. Do I need to roll to knock nope. it open? It's it was just I mean it's just barely on the barely oh, even shut. Okay. It's a ba abandoned cabin. So you can move through. <laughs> Oh, I gotta move it. Sorry. There you go. Yeah. Kind of move through there and kind of duck around the corner. Arthur, you're up. Not know where anybody's at, and like visually, he's gonna start moving towards the front. Yeah, you can run yeah. up to ten hexes. Yeah, as he's in there, like, you know, Bill's kind of like, Arth! Sheriff! Kind of sounding out. Is that 10? Uh, pretty sure it was. Okay. Uh, all right. So, 16. So, I believe it's our brave leader. Um, the thing is... A rifle has the long trait, and the long trait means he cannot shoot at short range, I believe. So I don't think he can really shoot you from here. Or maybe he gets a penalty. Let me look real quick. Sorry. Let's hope so. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, yeah he takes a hardship for shooting at this range because he's at firing at adjacent point blank or close. So the range is 12, so he's definitely at close, so he's going to take a hardship. But he does try to shoot you. Alright, here we go. Rifle. Benefit 0, hardship 1, additional mods. Just kind of cutting the corner, I'll give you... A negative three to the roll. He is close. That's a hit. In my face. In the head, oh god. Uh, uh no! Alright. I'm probably dead. Uh, maybe, let's see. Um, boy, okay, let me... I am dead. Well... That is, so it's... Well, you might have to you might have to make plus... a death you might have to make a death roll, but um, so let's. It's over my mortality. Yeah, but it has to be double your uh, double your mortality. Well, your mortality threshold is twenty two. So let's see, um, nine minus twenty one is twelve. Twenty four, twenty nine. Your mortality is twenty two. All right, so you need to make a death roll. Need to be to twenty nine. G 
gentlemen. It's been a pleasure. Oh, how abundant is your goodness. Ugh. So how does that look? Oh, two ones. God, that's awful. Yeah. Two ones. Uh, so Gunderson just misses and face goes blank because he knows what's coming. Um, he just thinks that, well, shit, that's the hell of a way to go out. And he's just looking at the, the red skin as the rifle levels and then it's just dark. There's a flash of light and then nothing else. The silence you hear, Bill, is kind of eerie. Gundy! Gundy! Yeah, it's moving up. All right. I think you're up, Bill, as this guy's closing in. I'm going to poke my head out and blow him away. You're at uh, point blank. Yeah. All your negatives should be uh, factored in. That's a hit. Jesus. Five. Uh, eight. Right on. Uh, let's see. A 13. That's a 10. That's enough to kill him. So this is just kind of, and he blows his arm off, and maybe he doesn't die immediately. He just kind of, ah! yeah, he's falls down to the, yeah, he's rolling around on the ground and just bleeds out pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Tucker just kind of checks his weapon. That was uh, three shots, I think, so far. Mm -hmm. All right, Arthur, you're up. Actually, you're not. So it says first ammo for two. Hmm? It says I only have two ammo left. Or maybe it... You might have started... I think... How many times do you think you shot? Three. Okay, then just... Then just update it. Oh, it says it right on here. Okay, it's fine. Okay. Um, all right, so... Steps over. Gets to right about here. All right, Arthur, you're up. All right, Arthur, as he gets close to the edge, he's going to slow down and move up the corner so he can kind of peep around. Actually you don't see anything there. But you're running, no. so... Where, where are you going to end up? Yeah, so that was coming. Use the Q button if you want to like, count them. Right, easy. Three hexes. You move three? Four. And then okay. this would be five, six. I don't know. I'm hitting the wall or something. Hmm? Can't go any lower. You can't go south? And oh, <laughs> sorry, I moved the stupid dynamic lighting thing there <laughs> my bad there you go no okay all right all right what was that yeah. is that six seven i think you, you think you can get to like right this hex right here right i think as you run sounds good yeah you you run and you see on the uh, you see it, the back of an engine facing you and you see the sheriff slumped over in the corner I'm gonna try to sound. Hopefully, the engine didn't see me. Uh, we'll find out. Bill, you're up. Uh, Bill. Uh, gun smoke, uh, kind of clearing. Um, kind of shuts that door gingerly, and then, uh, I don't think I can see anything right now. Uh, uh I want to just, uh, kind of use my senses to try to hear where the commotion's coming from. Yeah, go ahead and give me a perception roll. You hear, heard a massive rifle blast. 
Let's see if I hear any footsteps or anything. Uh, yeah, you hear footsteps in the next room to the south of you where you thought Gundy was. You're not sure if it was him or not, but... Okay, I'm going to kind of uh, try to get towards that door and post up right about there. Yeah, you should be able to. And uh, ready my weapon. Okay, so how many was that? One, uh, one, two, three. Okay. 21. Uh, so he does move this way. And you see him as he comes through the door. He has to stop there. Oops. Arthur, what are you going to do? I think, oh no, Bill, you're up. So he, he's kind of shocked to see you. He's got a rifle in his hand. Uh, the, the engine hears a click next to his head. All right, give me a, uh, give me a roll. He gets the dodge, but... So, well, you, you, so let me kind of give you a little hint. You can aim, like you could literally aim three times. You might want to, because so if you aim three times, that puts you up at twenty-four, and he's at twenty-five. Yeah, because I, cause I got you got some problems. I have wounds, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, I'll do that then. Okay. So. All right, Arthur, you're up. He's at 25 AP, yep, right? Yep, you can... I'm going to do the same. Aim three times? Yep. All right, Bill, you're up first. So you have three benefits, and everything else is added automatically. Nice. All right, let me uh, move that. So he's going to try to dodge. Come on, be less than 30. Oh, no. Oh, oh no. You shoot, and he... It's like knocks yeah, the gun knocks away. The gun. Rifle or something. Yeah, knocks the gun away. Oh, no. All right. Oh, All right, Arthur. God damn it. Art, where are you? Alright, so three benefits, no chips, no additional mods, right? Yeah, you're at medium range. Alright. You're not running anymore either. So. Uh, right. 20. Oh, you missed. Yeah, lied. God, guys. Um. So this you're at 27 now, actually. So this guy has basically a bludgeoning. He's got a rifle. He just swings it at Bill, trying to hit you with it. So this is going to be um, I'm going to do a bludgeons. I don't have uh, actually this any macros for that one, so I'll just do a straight bludgeons. All right, so you want to roll a dodge. Dodge, dodge, dodge. So he go. rolled a dodge last time. Hold on, I forgot to do one thing. So it's not going to matter, but on a dodge, you should pay one AP. But that's okay. Go ahead. So you don't dodge. Um, let's see. 26. It's going to be up to 29. So it only it doesn't do any damage really. 6, 7. Um, that's going to give you a. Um, oh, I got to do hit location. And then we'll see. Torso. So it gives you another injury. So he hits you in the ribs with this, the butt of the rifle. <laughs> All right, Bill, you're up again. Yeah. 
I have two bullets left. And I'm kind of on the ground, I guess, tussling around with this guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to try to stick the gun up in his, to his chest and pull the trigger. Yeah, you can aim once. I better do that since... Uh, I better do that since I'm pretty beat mm -hmm. up. So that's one benefit. Yep, uh, but it's it's Arthur's turn. What are you going to do? Aim? Move? Yeah, I'm going to aim the one time too as well. Okay. You are up. Bill. Jesus Christ! Can't hit the broad side of a barn. Yep. You just you're just got a bruised ribs, slashed from the arrow, and then your ears bleeding. Arthur, what are you gonna do? Shoot. Let's see. I don't feel so bad now. <laughs> you motherfuckers can't hit shit either. <laughs> Fucking Christ. Alright. Hold on, my keyboard's going funky. Okay, there we go. Um, Alright, so... He is going to drop his rifle and pull his tomahawk. That'll put him at 31. Just enough to attack. Um, no! Yeah. Jeez. Not my mustache! Okay, so you're gonna roll a dodge on this one? Yeah, it's not gonna happen with me hurt like this. I'm getting scalped! Eight, seven, ah! not terrible. Seven, ten. Not enough to give you a wound. Uh, hit location 7, yeah. Got another injury. Comes down and... Like, hits you in the shoulder. Alright. Puts him at 34. Tuck, Tucker's just kind of rolling around on the floor, all bloodied up with this Indian. That, uh, that uh, Arthur can see. Yep. So how? F I got a quick question. How like a regular move? Five. You can move up to five. I guess if you can get into short range, it would help. But that, that's my help that's my goal. <laughs> um, um, and I guess Bill, would I be all still taking action, right? No, you you'd have to move then wait to your next action. Gotcha. Um. So, Bill, you can uh, aim. It's your turn, so you can aim twice if you want to. What's oh, <laughs> so gonna matter? I mean, All right, I'll aim twice, and I'll I'll use my last bullet. This is it. Oh boy! Yeah, I'm down to my one two. <laughs> fade to black. The scene fades to black. All right, let's see it. I can go again. Yep. Arthur, oh, no, Arthur, right. you, you can get. What are you gonna do, Arthur? Yeah. Uh, can I go through this window to move five spaces? Yeah, that no, that's around? this is a door. That's a door. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm just too beat up. That's five for you. Taking on all those engines on the porch yeah. of death. Torch of death. Oh, my keyboard is really being dumb. I'm about to start clubbing them with my pistol as soon as I use my last bullet. You all have knives too, don't forget. Alright. Bill, you're up. I'm gonna shoot my last bullet, like with my right hand, while my left hand fumbles around at my belt for the knife. <laughs> Whispers a prayer as he pulls the trigger. Come on, 
Uh, get some exploding so dice. I, here. I, I get, I get, I get two, two benefits. Uh, two, benefits. Mm -hmm. two benefits. Thirteen. <laughs> That's it, I'm out. I'm out of ammo. I'm Winchester. Alright, it's his turn again with the tomahawk. He notices Arthur. Arthur, if you can see, he sees Tucker just kind of toss away his gun as he pulls his knife out. He looks to Arthur who has his gun pointed at him and he moves. He's not he doesn't have enough room to charge, so he's just gotta move. He needs at least three hexes to charge, so he moves one, so he's at 35. Uh, what are you, oh, he still goes, he's still up. So then he swings his tomahawk at you. If my keyboard mm. would ever respond to what I'm doing here. I mean, I'm alright if it doesn't. <laughs> alright, you're ready to dodge here. Fourteen, not a good roll. Yes. Yeah, he misses. Seems vaguely familiar. Uh, Bill, you are up. Stabbed this fucker. And he's got to draw it first. Oh. Yeah, I got to draw my That's knife. Two AP, unless you want to try to draw it quickly, but with all your negatives, not a good idea. Nah. I'm gonna fumble. Yeah, you would. Make the hard master simulation complete. <laughs> Oh, come on, dude. Alright, Arthur, you're up. You could aim once. Alright, I'm gonna aim once and then shoot when I get the opportunity. You can do it uh, in succession. So, you just give yourself a benefit. You'd be at 40 after it's all done. So as we engage in close combat... He is adjacent, right? He is adjacent, so he's gonna dodge. It's a good roll. Alright. It's a good roll. It's a good roll. Hopefully he doesn't. Now he's now he's actually got a alright, let me he's got a negative three to this roll because he's surrounded. Or he has one extra um, person on him. So negative three to this roll. That's a hit. Yes. That's 12. Oh, I guess he shouldn't have the negative three because you have a gun. That's right. So uh, you're not actually threatening him. Um, so, okay. Um, 24 minus, so 9 plus 8, 17 torso. That kills him. Ah. How does it look? Well, that's what. As as they tussle and Arthur's gonna get the gun in close and then pull the trigger. And as he as the Indian falls down, well, that's what you get, red skin. He's gonna put it on him. Bill, you're all right. You can see Tucker kind of uh stump around the corner. He has his knife in his left hand and switches it over to his right. Ugh, I'm pretty far from all right. Arthur. Gundy, get to him. Oh, no! He kind of looks over at Gunderson where his brain matter is splattered against the door and kind of runs halfway across the room but then kind of stops. Is that it? Is that all of them? I don't know. And there might be more in the woods. And can I kind of try to peek around? Yeah, you peek around outside. You don't see anybody else. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ! And, uh, Bill just, like, stomps the face of the, of the brave. God damn it! 
Damn it to hell! God, those sons of bitches. And he kind of goes back into the room and picks up his weapon and starts to load it again. Yeah, Arthur right would we'll definitely reload this when they're sitting, when they're standing. <sighs> they must have followed us back when we made camp. Yeah, I reckon so. I reckon so, god damn it. He kind of looks looks out the front door to see if, like, if there's anybody there and goes, Come on, help me get Gundy. I'm not leaving this goddamn body here for these heathens to feast on come the evening. All right, I'll go gather the horses. And uh, Tucker goes and tries to just kind of do a fireman carry with uh, Gundy's body and take him outside and strap one to one of the horses. Yeah, you get him up on his horse and you can lead it off. And uh, as they head off, Tucker just kind of says, "You better make time, Arthur. Those gunshots. I know they don't carry far in these woods with this snow, but they they carry far enough, I reckon. They carry far enough. Well, anybody with an earshot knows that we're here." Yeah, you look outside and you can see the other cabin down the way and it doesn't look like there's... You see no lights. It's getting cold. There's no way that somebody would not have a fire. Right. And the scene is that you put the poor sheriff on his horse and clip-clop, clip-clop towards... back towards the road. So, if you have any other things you want to say... Well, Bill, I'm so, so sorry about your friend. I didn't know him that well, but he seemed like a great man. Yeah, he was a good man, Arthur. He was a good man. We'll have our revenge. He won't say much else, but has a steely look in his eye. And only one ear. Yeah, Bill's pretty beat up and Yeah, he's kind of like hunched over his hunched over his horse, you know. Yeah. Holding his side. In the dawn of the next day you see Leclerc in the distance. And both Bill and Arthur look over to the dead sheriff and this camera pans to Bill's face. You're not sure if it's the pain of his injuries and wounds or the pain of a loss of a good friend. And with that, the screen fades to black.